may well be asking yourself, what does footage of the Sex Pistols and The Clash, a cocktail bar called The Gay Traitor, factory records, and this wonderful building, the Hacienda, have in common? Well, the answer is one man, which is this man here, Tony Wilson, who as well as being boss of factory records and co-founder of the Hacienda, is also a TV presenter for Granada and started uh, the TV program, So It Goes, that just had the footage of the Sex Pistols and Clash. Well, well, well. I'm blushing, aren't I? I'm blushing, <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Tony, yes, yes, how, Tony, how did you get about starting factory records? Tell us, tell us the story behind Steve that. Chiswick challenge. Steve Chiswick challenge. challenge. Steve challenge. going on about it. Um, I just started managing it. When So It Goes finished after two seasons, quite rightly, because Granada were tired of people with horses' tails sticking out of their asses, which I think was the way they described Iggy Pop. Um, I wanted to stay involved with what, all the things that I was with, working with, with music. music and, and so a friend of mine was managing a band, Mr. Erasmus, who's over there, and I helped him manage the band. And we needed a gig for somewhere to play, and then needed a record company. It's called Praxis, yeah. but we won't go into that, because it's really not the So fa night. Factory's been, been really successful, and you ended up building, building the Hacienda. There's one thing that everybody is always asking us, why you call it the Hacienda? Is there a reason? Yeah, we found it inscribed on a <coughs> tablet at our last gig. So that's, uh, that's, that's completely so untrue. It's the kind of answer that you want to give in all their interviews, and we do not like to change the myth now. <laughs> this is, by the way, Peter Hook from New Order, um, for those, those viewers who want to know. Those of you who didn't see Kevin's <laughs> wonderful pictures of him on the screen. Now, obviously, you've been really successful with Factory, with Joy Division and New Order. Mm -hmm. What about the other groups that's, that are on the label that haven't done quite so well? Do you think there's a reason why... Stockholm Monsters, yeah, and the, the many others. <clears throat> I think we've got a problem. The After you're fashionable, the way... 52nd Street. After you're fashionable, then you become unfashionable. Members of the rock press, such as the one we're going to bring in in a minute, um, know the way this sort of fashion X member, this fashion thing goes. And we suffered very badly from it because we were so successful and so notorious and well known. There then became a period when nothing could be done about, about the new bands and they were all stuck. And we have the best collection of young bands in the country, but right. maybe people but will know about it. Right, some we'll will. Let's, let's bring in this ex member of the music press. This is man, is Mr. Paul Morley. The reason we he, got him he, here actually is to say how some people stay in Manchester, do to do this program. and some people leave and go to London. Paul Morley, can we start? Can we start? Can I ask first? Paul Morley is the man behind ZTT Records, whose first first single, Frankie Goes Hollywood, is currently number one in the charts at the moment. Now, why did you get to start a label? And that's without the swear word to recap. It's very complicated. I mean, it gave me a chance, to, first of all, to work with the best record producer in the world, which meant that he would produce that's the Trevor best Horn. songs so that I could do some things that were influenced by factory records that meant when we got to number one, the intelligence and the imagination that you don't often get with London record companies, in fact you never get, would therefore be involved. Why is there, why is there this um, sort of antagonism between the two there's labels? There's not an antagonism. <laughs> <laughs> as, you, as, you, as you can see, he just mentioned us and the fact that he gives any reference to us in the wonderful thing that he's doing gives me a great deal of pleasure. I mean, we both have this, we're theoretically very similar. Exactly, what well, most groups right. always say about their biggest influences as a record label, the biggest influence in terms of its presentation was definitely factory. Because record labels in London, London's the most boring place in the world, and people who work for record companies are stupid. And I just wanted to show that imagination. Well, you're you're separating I'm yourself from that, I'll take it. Even separating you're, you're both of yourselves from being stupid, I'll take it. And working for record labels. Oh, come on, Tom, relax, calm down. Oh, relax, the, the title of the single that's what currently said, number one. Intelligence and imagination, and that's all. No messing about, no. None of the awful dirty right. Well, these, these are the people that are in charge of Manchester's record labels, and in now we're going <laughs> to no. see a video of ABC. You're back in Manchester, Paul. You're back, in, you're back in Manchester again.